solely from mental illness to seek euthanasia. As we've re- been reporting here on the show, of course, we've been covering this mental illness act, part of it, which is going to roll out in March of 2023. So this dispatch from dispatch.com, here's an interesting take. They published this piece this morning, and I, I think it, I want to read it to you. So uh, don't worry about trying to follow along here. But I'm going to read this to you. Opponents of the laws argue they diminish the lives of people with disabilities and can create uh, pressure on people to kill themselves. Persons with disabilities may decide to end their lives because of broader social factors such as loneliness, social isolation, and lack of access to quality social services. United Nations officials wrote in a letter to Canadian leaders last year warning the country's expanding MAID laws could violate the UN's Human Rights Declaration. A social assumption might follow or be subtly reinforced that it's better to be dead than to live with a disability. You think? Yeah, and that's already happening. Such, so here's a few examples from this dispatch piece. Such concerns are not hypothetical. Roger Foley, hospitalized with a degenerative brain disorder in Ontario, recorded a conversation with a hospital director of ethics earlier this year in which his ethicist reminded him in a stay at the hospital that it would cost north of $1,500 a day. That's like a dog. Like, literally, do you want to pay the cost of caring for this dog or put them down? Yeah. Like, you have these conversations with a vet. But humans are not dogs, right? So according to Foley, hospital staff raised the idea of assisted dying, unprompted. Like, the hospital administrator, the director, just brought it up. It's like, hey, I know this is going to be expensive. Or Here's an you idea. could not. Here, or you could just die. <clears throat> we got ways for that. We, we, we've got ways. <laughs> That's crazy. Canadian Sheila Elson, whose adult daughter, <laughs> Candace Lewis, has several medical conditions, including cerebral palsy, said in a 2016 doctor, uh, in 2016, a doctor brought up assisted suicide for Lewis in front of the young girl and told Elson that she was being selfish when she rejected the idea. You're being selfish to not let your daughter die, and we can take care of her right now. All we need to do is just fill out some paperwork and go, go down the hallway. We can... We can Get this taken care of for you. That, you know that your daughter that has cerebral palsy? We can take care of that for you. There was an episode of Scrubs where they made fun of this. Like, what if we did this like animals? You know? Yeah. Like, how you, you would put, da- put down a horse with a, like a shotgun, right? Yeah. And in the sort of scene, JD, the doctor, he's like, I don't like the looks of that leg, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> right? Like, right. it's as if it's so ridiculous that we should not, we should only, like, it's talk comedy. about this in parody. Right. This is like a Monty Python sketch or a Scrubs sketch, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. this is, but no, this is real. This is, this is Canada. And it's happening in other countries as well. Like I said, 11, Switzerland expanding, Belgium expanding. Well, we've been covering the new eugenics program on this show for a while. Many people wrongly believe that the government assisted eugenics ended after World War II. It didn't. It is alive and well with just a bit of rebranding in 2022. So it's still here. As we've talked about on this show, this all has its roots in um, in uh, in in Malthusian policy. So this is Thomas Malthus. He was an English cleric who believed in population control, the idea that the world can't handle so many people. It gave rise to the eugenics programs in the early part of the last century. They were able to say, hey, This is a, we've got, you know, he's, what what he's saying is really troubling because we're going to run out of food. We've got to start putting people down. We've got to start making sure that people can't breed again. And also they wanted to selectively breed out undesirable traits in humans such as. Crime, criminals, theft. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, People who scored low on tests, um, people who had disabilities. And they thought they could actually, they actually thought that they could breed out poverty. As if somehow poverty is like a part of a part of your genetic DNA, right? That you could breed out people who just can't make money. Or can't Actually, succeed. though, the wealthiest American families were poor within three to five generations. For instance, the, the Vanderbilts, who today would be wealthier than Bill Gates by some estimates, um, within three generations, that general generational wealth was gone. Because the kids, they didn't, they didn't understand how. So to, the idea yeah. that you could br- continue to breed wealth has been disproven. 
Uh, so I don't know how you could then use it to think that you could breed out poverty. So the American eugenics movement embraced negative eugenics with the goal to eliminate undesirable genetic traits in the human race through selective breeding. Basically, the United States would push you off into camps where you would be sanitized, sorry, sanitized and sterilized, right? So you couldn't breed and they would kill you off never to breed again, never to be a part of the problem again. It's What's amazing. interesting about this is that th these are things that breeders do with, with animals, right? They only breed the strongest for certain things and certain traits. Th that's been understood, understood. But humans are the only species which takes extra care of our, in, innately, we take extra care of our weakest. Um, it's just something in us if somebody needs help. That's what makes us human, whereas right. most species will sort of like push out of the nest, the one that's least viable. We don't do that. So this is what makes us human. So if we start to accept this, then we are fundamentally becoming less human. Hmm. And this is exactly... Well, and also, we can't... Hmm. We aren't the same as animals to where like it takes many more generations for us to... Uh, change than it does an animal. I think it's what 10 generations you can have something completely mm. different in an animal, but like what is that for humans? It's oh, I don't know. Way. I've never heard that. Yeah, I've often wondered why. But this um, is transhumanism. I mean, this is what so this is exactly what transhumanism is. Yeah. Instead of it being eugenics, right? The, the name eugenics, it's now transhumanism. And so this is exactly what Whitney Webb, I sat down with her and talked about this. And she says, this is still, I mean, this is happening. And now it's just been rebranded and it's transhumanism, right? It's making us less human, watch. Talking about transhumanism, right? That's how you can really see what the eugenics program became. So after World War II, you have Julian Huxley, who's Aldous Huxley's brother. Um, he's installed as the president of UNESCO, but he's also the president of the British Eugenics Society. And charting out his vision for UNESCO, he writes about eugenics. We need to make the unthinkable thinkable again. Ten years later, he describes how to do that in a book called New Bottles for New Wine. Uh, which is basically him talking about the human race in that metaphor. And he coins, the, he, he, coins he creates the term transhumanism, Julian Huxley. Wow. And he says that this is the new eugenics, merging man with machine and using these technologies to manipulate genes and, and all of that. So, you know, it's definitely evolved. Yeah, so it never went away. It evolved. Now under the made laws in Canada, Canada's, this is unbelievable part of the story. Canada's pediatric society says it's okay to basically eliminate children, you know, as long as they show signs that they are mature. What so, does that even uh, let mean? Me, let me repeat that. Canada's pediatric society under these made laws basically says, hey, if the, if the child is mature enough, like they're not an adult yet, not 18, if, but if they're showing signs of maturity, then they can... We're, we're going to we're, we're going to refer to them as mature minors, and they can Basically, make the determination to kill them, to, to to be assisted suicide and, and taken care of. Basically, if they can if they can decide their own gender, they can. No, but this is the same. Yeah, yeah, you make a good point. This is the same thing. Is that yes, children should be able to yeah change their bodies, make these decisions, make adult decisions as minors. Oh, you're 12 and you're depressed. Well, here you go. We don't even need to, we don't even need to check with the parents. You're you're a mature you're a mature minor. You're 12. You seem like you're mature. Do you want a doctor's note to go and you know take care of that thing called life? Like that's yeah, we what we're we talking these, about uh, here. We have the red and blue pill. We have the hormone blocker or the life taker. Which one do you want, red or blue? Yeah. Yeah. Because continuing no to live how you are right now is not an option. Unbelievable. Mature minors. Oxymoron, right? well, at least, crazy. I mean, I wasn't Lisa, mature until I was in my 30s. Well, you're not, in fact, <laughs> because not. Right, the well. process of myelation does not end until you're 30. So myelation is the process by which your brain sort of gets covered in what's like a phone wire, like this wire, like a think of it like a plastic. It sort of matures the brain. It starts, at, you know, right at the base of your neck and then moves forward to the prefrontal cortex. And that does not end until 30. And so how are you, you know, that's why like a lot of us feel like you never had a conscious thought until you were 30. Yeah. I feel like that yeah. a lot of times you didn't, you were like still maturing your brain. So how can you allow someone to make a decision that changes their entire future before this process is complete? 
So well, the thing is, I was even thinking, like, Canada. why do we even let people get married before they're 30 if that's the case? Right. You know, like these are things that I'm worried about. Not like, shall I remove parts of my body? Yeah. Well, and the thing is, this is happening in Canada. I don't think the pharmaceutical industry would let it happen here because they'd be losing too many potential residual clients. Um, depends because our, our medical system works so much differently that like, think of what an insurer would pay for this. For instance, like why does an insurer want to pay for um, you to get your tubes tied or a hysterectomy or a, um, what did you have, honey? The the snip uh i had uh, a vasectomy thank you oh reduction surgery uh, no well why would they want to do that right because it it will f um like the future costs will be mitigated right so they can charge a lot for that procedure knowing they don't have to continue to pay for things that are expensive like another baby or hormones or what have you so um in the united states you could see that they could charge a lot for this the insurance companies would absolutely pay it and then like oh good that's a profit on that individual right now i don't have to pay for expensive care right. in the future i can pay i can make a profit on this so they're focusing on well, the maybe people the pharmaceutical pain. companies will We'll come up with a way to make you so that you're not all the way gone, but you have to take a pill monthly to stay gone. Mm. You know, like oh, otherwise, yeah. if you don't, if you stop, you, like, like those. We did a story recently the about people who were in these freezers, right? Yeah, yeah, like who attacks. knows? Yeah. So they're focusing on the. Yeah. So they're focusing on the people with pain, but that's just a tiny part of the story. Canada is now focusing on assisted suicide for the mentally ill, so it's not just about the pain anymore. Like they're moving that narrative away from that, right? You can't pay your bills, you're depressed. Okay, we got a plan for you. If you're depressed, you have anxiety, you can take your own life. It's spreading to now most of the Western, most of other Western countries, Switzerland, Australia. I hate saying, I know I hate lumping in Australia, it's not a Western country. It's what a South, 